Hello, welcome to this session of class 6 mathematics and I am your Anu. Last class it was fractions and we stopped until like and unlike fractions, isn't it? So let's continue with like and unlike fractions. So what did I say about like fractions? Like fractions are fractions which have the denominators same. Okay, if all the denominators are equal, then we say all the fractions are like fractions. But when the denominators are different, they are unlike. So we go to unlike after some time, after seeing like fractions. Okay, so first, how do we compare like fractions? How do we compare? So whether they are greater, lesser or equal. How do we compare them? See, I have written 6 by 8, 3 by 8, 7 by 8, 1 by 8 and 5 by 8. So it is obviously we know how, which is greater and which is lesser, isn't it? See, this is 1 by 2, 1 by 4 and this is 1 by 8. So I have made 8 parts, 8 equal parts of a full circle okay so these are eight parts so if i need to shade one by eight if i need to represent one by eight so this is one by eight okay so the next one is see this is one by eight this is the minimum that is the least fraction i can make out of this uh, whole object next is three see one after three the next is this is three by eight okay so the next is three by eight and then out of which five is the next smallest one so five so five five by eight this is five by eight next is six by eight and then seven by eight okay so seven by eight we have shaded seven parts so seven by eight now if we observe we can readily say which one is smaller and which one is greater isn't it which is the smallest of all these uh, fractions and which is the uh, greatest of all these fractions, isn't it? So it makes it easier when the denominators are same. Okay, so you need to take into account the denominators and the denominators have to be same for you to compare. Okay, so when you need to compare fractions, see to that the denominators are same in this like fractions. Like fractions have denominators equal. So we can compare the given fractions like when I write it in ascending order, I write 1 by 8, less than 3 by 8, less than 5 by 8, less than 6 by 8, less than 7 by 8. So 7 by 8 is the greatest and 1 by 8 is the smallest fraction. You understand? So this is how we compare like fractions. Now, how do we operate? So operations, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, these are the operations we have seen and all the types of operations can be done with fractions and like fractions are easier for us to add and subtract. So when it comes to multiplication and division, that is separate. So regarding addition and subtraction, we will start with addition and subtraction. It is very easier for us to add and subtract like fractions because denominator is the same okay so you need to just add the numerators see 1 by 8 plus sorry 1 by 8 plus 3 by 8 so I showed you the shadings before isn't it 1 by 8 along with it if I shade three other parts how many parts it will be just 4 by 8 isn't it so that is 4 by 8 so we can't stop with this 4 by 8 I told you 4 by 8 can be reduced if at all they have a common factor other than 1 isn't it so here the common factor is 4 so divided by 4 divide the numerator and the denominator by 4 I get 1 by 2 so 1 by 2 is the answer for 1 by 8 plus 3 by 8 so like fractions keep the denominator same and just add the numerator it is like I say I'll say that when I when we come to unlike fraction, so we just talk to this. So you just add the numerator and put the same denominator. Okay. Now for subtraction, seven by eight minus three by eight. So seven by eight minus three by eight. Just you need to subtract. So four by eight again, and you will have one by. So 1 by 2 will be the answer. I have taken simpler examples for you. So when we do sums regarding operations, regarding addition and subtraction of fractions, let us 
take some integer fractions too. I mean, uh, sorry, uh, both positive and negative fractions too, and we'll see the operations together. Okay. So this is what operation on like fractions mean. So it will be very easy for us to add or subtract fractions which are like fractions. Okay. Now we'll move on to unlike fractions. We have seen like fractions. Now let us see unlike fractions. Now they are not like like fractions because denominators are different. Now it is very hard for us to uh, determine which is smaller and which is greater. We can't just say 1 by 7 is greater, smaller, 6 by 10 or uh, which is uh, that is 3 by 6 or 4 by 5 is greater. Just by observation we won't be able to by, uh, by practice we can say but just by observation it is very difficult for us to determine which is greater and which is smaller, isn't it? So there is a method to compare uh, unlike fractions, okay, just like making them, that is the first step is you need to make the unlike fractions to like fractions. You change unlike fractions to like fractions. That is, you make all the denominators equal and then you can compare, isn't it? So, when you make denominators equal, it will be easy for us to compare, isn't it? So, how do we uh, make all the denominators same? So, let's see. I, I just take two examples for you, just two numbers for you so that it will be easy for you to understand. See, I have taken 6 by 10 and 4 by 5. Now, these are unlike fractions because denominators are different. These are unlike fractions, isn't it? So, when I need to change the denominator, I mean, change uh, both of them to be the same, I see both the numbers. See, 5 and 10. You take 5 and 10. See, how do I convert? Either I should convert I mean, uh, one of the numbers to the other number or I should change it into entirely different numbers so that the uh, number obtained is common to both the numbers. So what do I do is this uh, easy method or the direct method to convert the denominators equal is, is to find the LCM of all the denominators. Okay, you have different denominators, you just find the LCM. LCM, what do you mean by LCM? Least common multiple. So it is a common multiple of the of both the numbers so you just find the LCM of 5 and 10 so the uh, method we use to find LCM is 5 1 and 2 isn't it I divided by 5 so 5 1 and 2 I have so 5 into 1 into 2 it will give you 10 so 10 is the LCM of these two numbers the other method of finding LCM a shortcut to find LCM is Whenever you are given with numbers, either two numbers or more than two numbers, you just pick out the biggest number, that is greatest number. You just pick the greatest number and you see the multiples of the greatest number. So I say 10 ones are 10. So 10, see 10 whether 10 appears in the 5 tables. Yes, it is. 5 twos are 10, isn't it? So when we uh, see the multiples of the bigger number, then which multiple occurs in both the numbers both the tables of tables of both the numbers then that is the LCM now 10 ones are 10 that 10 is also a multiple of 5 that is 5 twos are 10 isn't it so 10 is a LCM likewise we can find the LCM of all the numbers here okay see you have 10 here this is the biggest number out of all the denominators I have the biggest number as 10 now I should keep uh, saying the multiples of 10 10 ones are 10 See if it occurs in all the tables. No, isn't it? Because it occurs only in the tables. 5, 5 twos are 10. The rest of it or not. 10 is not a multiple of these three numbers. 7, 4, 6, isn't it? So 10 twos are 20. You just observe. Then 10 threes are 30. 30 is a multiple of 6, 5. But it is not a multiple of 7 and 4, isn't it? So 40, 50 likewise. You keep on. Telling. Okay, instead of 70, up to 70 you say, but 70 still is not a multiple of 6. So, this is the easy method or shortcut method we can follow uh, by finding out the multiple of the bigger number. Otherwise, if you find uh, LCM, taking LCM as usual, then you can do it in that way too. See, 7, 4, 6, 10 and 5, find the LCM. I'll put 5 here. 2 and 1. Now, next two tables. 7, 2, 3, 1 and 1. Next is, see all are prime, isn't it? So, uh, it will be as such. 
1 p 1 1 and 3 times. So you just multiply all these things. So what happens? Just whenever you multiply some numbers, see to that you first multiply the numbers which will give you multiples of 10. Answer will be multiples of 10. Then it will be easier for you to multiply the rest of the numbers. See 5 2s are 10 here, isn't it? So it is easy for us to multiply 5 2s are 10. Now 2 3s are 6. 6 into 7 is 42. 42 into 10 is 420. So 420 appears in all the tables. 420 appears in all the tables or 420 is the least common multiple. The first multiple which occurs in all the tables. So 420 is the LCM. Now how do I convert the denominators to 420? See 1 by 7. What is 420 uh, when divided uh, by 7? 420 divided by 7 is 60 isn't it? So 60 into 60. Next, 2 divided by 4. What is 420? I mean, 420 divided by 4 is 105. So, 105 into 105. Now, 3 divided by 6 is 70 into 70. 6 divided by 10 into 42 into 42. 4 by 5 into what is 420? 8, 84. Okay. So, that's it. So, you have all the denominators to be 420. You see, this is 420. 420, 420, 420 and 420. Now, the numerators are 16. five into 2 is 10. 1, 2, 10. And this is also 2, 10. See, you have 2, 10. Yes. Next, this is 12, 25, 16, 36. So, if you see, I have written, see, 2 by 4 and 3 by 6, you have the same number. So, recall what I told you about equal fractions. Equal fractions, see, equal fractions is, I mean, they reduced, either their uh, reduced form, their lowest form is same or when I convert them like this, okay, when I find LCM and convert them into like fractions, they give you the same answer because 2 by 5, uh, 2 by 4 can be reduced to 1 by 2 because I can divide it by 2, it becomes 1 by 2, 3 by 6 when I divide it by 3, it is also 1 by 2. Isn't it? So, these are not equivalent fractions. Actually, 2 by, two by 4 can't be written as 1, 3 by 6. Isn't it? So, they are not equivalent fractions, but they are equal fractions. Because they are reduced to the uh, same fraction, 1 by 2. Okay. So, just keep that in mind. So, how do I rearrange them? How do I compare? So, I can compare. See, 2 by 2, 10 divided by 2, 4, 20, same. So, these two are equal. So, I can compare. 2 by 4 is equal to 3 by 6. Isn't it? Next is... 60 by 20 is the lowest. So, which is the smallest one? 1 by 7 is the smallest one. Less than. So, I take any 1. 210 divided by 420. I take any 1 because 2 by 4 or 3 by 6. Anyway, both are same. So, uh, 2 are equal. So, so, it occupies the same position. So, the next one after 210, it is 252. What is 252? 6 by 10. So, it is less than 6 by 10. And 336 is the larger one. So, 4 by 5 is the largest. So, likewise I compare. So, how do we compare unlike fractions? By making all the denominators to be same. How do we make all the denominators equal? By finding the LCM of all the denominators. Okay. So, that is how we compare. So, after uh, making all the denominators equal, we can easily add or subtract the fractions. So, whenever you are given with unlike fractions, you just uh, make them to, you just convert them into like fractions by making all the denominators equal. And then whatever, and do whatever it is directed. Either you need to compare or you need to operate. That is, uh, you need to add or subtract. You can do with like fractions. Okay, it will be much easier for you. So when we go to the problems part, we'll solve as many problems as we can regarding unlike fractions, like fractions, comparing and operating. Okay. So the next thing is, I want to insist about next uh, topic is, so we have seen like fractions and like fractions, comparing them. Next, I want to tell you one thing about, which we have missed it, about equivalent fractions. So I said, what are equivalent fractions? Fractions, fractions, when a fraction is given, I can write equivalent fractions either by 
uh, multiplying with the same number, see 3 by 2 into 5 by 2 will give you 6 by 10. So what I say 3 by 5 is equivalent to 6 by 10, isn't it? These two are equivalent fractions. Now, how do we verify whether they are equivalent? If you are given separately, if you are given 3 by 5 and 6 by 10, how do you verify whether they are equivalent fractions? We know to find out equivalent fractions. We know to bring equivalent fractions from a given fraction, isn't it? We either multiply them by the same number or we divide them by the same number. But how do we find, if at all two fractions are given, how do we find whether they are equivalent fractions? I have told you how to find equal fractions, that is by reducing them, reduce, I mean by bringing them to re, uh, reduced form or simpler form, we see that they have the same simpler form, simplest form or the same reduced form. So we say that those two fractions are equal fractions, isn't it? But how do we determine that these two fractions are equivalent fractions? when they are given separately. You see 3 by 5 and if 6 by 10 is given and we are asked to find out whether they are equivalent or not. What do we do is we just cross multiply. See numerator with the second fraction denominator and multiply first fraction denominator with the second fraction numerator. So what do you get? 30. 5 into 6 also 30. So you have 30 into 30. That is product of extremes. Numerator into denominator. Numerator of the first fraction into numerator of the uh, I mean denominator of the second fraction. Then numerator of the second fraction into denominator of the first fraction should give you the same result. If they are same, then we say they are equivalent fractions. By this way, you can find out equivalent fractions. So we are missing numbers in equivalent fractions. See, I'll show you how we have 4 by 9 and we have something blank here and I have uh, like uh, see some uh, so 12 uh, no 48 will not be there so let it be 6 okay now I have 9 here okay so now 4 divided by 6 and here some there is a box here is equal to 9 now, how do I find out the uh, missing number in the box? How do I do? I told you the product of extremes. That is 4 into 9 should be equal to 6 into this something. What is 4 into 9? It is 36. Okay. So, what should be multiplied with uh, 6 to get 36? It is 6 of course. So, this becomes 36. Therefore, the answer is 6 by 9. Okay. 4 by 6 is equal to 6 by 9. So these two are equivalent fractions. So when I multiply the extremes that is numerator into denominator and this numerator into denominator should give me the same result. So that is how we find out the missing digit in equivalent fractions. Do you understand? So these are the concepts we have to know regarding fractions. Okay. So in the next classes we'll, be, we'll uh, try to solve as many problems as possible depending upon these concepts so that we'll get to know more about fractions and how do fractions behave when operated or when compact okay so we'll start doing problems from the next class until then it's bye from anu thank you